The first one is not an easy one. Uh, what do you make of the following proposition? That, here's the proposition. The history profession has become a stark case study of income inequality and then rigid boundaries of status and prestige.
couple of years was talking about. But um, yes, I know I had. Um, but it's not the way I used to think about empathy. So it's a good thing. I'm, I'm being complimentary. <laughs> 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 um, I, I think the statement is pretty true um, based on no data other than anecdotal observation of my own. But in regard to income inequality and no path to advancement and the issues that Donald was just laying out, um, I think the profession reflects the United States in general and all of the issues that are outside of the academy as well. And this includes adjuncts and contingency faculty as well, but I would also add um, administrative and office staff, librarians, archivists, the facilities people, and others in the workplace often students who get paid next to nothing. They are also part of this, an important part of this, and that also includes the contractors that public history institutions and that museums and park service use and that um, part time or seasonal basis. But it's the second part of the statement that really interests me, the, the part about status and prestige. I, I think it comes at the topic from an, kind of an antiquated, kind of like academic antiquated point of view. Um, the assumption that everyone shares the same understanding of status and prestige, that getting a teaching job at an Ivy or a so-called first tier school is what everyone strives for and what everyone values. And, and I, I think hiring committees at large research universities and small liberal arts colleges often look more favorably upon such candidates because they were taught to know that, or because they themselves are that. But the proposition assumes the corporate ladder of academia equals the history profession, and it doesn't. Um, status and prestige from where I am situated are not based on where you teach, or who publishes your work, or who you were in graduate school with, so you can just call them up when you need to. Your, the, your homosocial reproductive power <coughs> um, is based more on creativity and capacity to connect with visitors. That's where prestige in my side of the work comes from. Your ability to work on a team and um, to um, communicate what you know. The capacity to really affect lives is where the prestige comes from. Also, in, in, uh, in my, I don't know, in my opinion, um, public history is where all the action is. It's where people catch history, catch the history fever when they're young. Um, and by the time you get them in your classes, we already had them. We're the ones who started it all. So um, we get them first. So I think public history and community college is where really things are really happening. Um, so yeah.